So, this is a new episode of my podcast, Underrated, Overhated, I nearly forgot the name there, somehow, it's the easiest name in the world, and this time I'm joined again by my little brother, who doesn't look my, like my little brother, he looks like <laughs> my, he, he looks like my, <laughs> like my long lost 50 year old um, uncle from Tennessee or something. I'll take that. <laughs> um... Obviously, people people listening can't see you, uh, but you've got a handlebar moustache. Not always, uh, just today. <laughs> just today. Well, maybe for a while, actually, I might keep maybe it. Maybe for a while. But it was, it was, it's a, it's like your post-Halloween, uh, it's a bit of a hang. I would call it a hangover, it's like a, it's yeah. definitely, yeah. Uh, I think that's fair. But we're going to talk about... I like You didn't mention how bald I was there, which was nice. No, I was going to do I was gonna do that, and I was like, should I be sensitive for once in my life? Well, but you I, brought it up. So I feel, I feel he's, like he's that, gonna... adds, that adds to the oldness vibe, the handlebar moustache plus the baldness. It does. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll do that then. So you've got a big handlebar moustache. You've got like a plaid kind of... Is it, like a, is it a t-shirt, actually? Or is no, it, it, is like a, a... It, is a, it is a shirt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you're bald. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a good look. Thank you. Um, and we were going to talk about the greatest bald musician of all time. So I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's a fair comment. How many? I mean, who, who, who's who's the who's the competition? So work. So I'll specify. We are talking about Stan Rogers, a Canadian folk musician. But if we talk about bald musicians, his competitions are what like Joe Satriani. Uh, who else is there? Uh, he's not that many. Bald Phil musicians. Collins, I guess. Phil Collins, yeah. Phil Collins wasn't no. always bald, though. Stan Rogers was bald from the beginning. Like, I, th- I think he was really bald from the age of, like, 23. Yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen like, a picture of him online from when he was about 22 or something like that, and he's bald. He just has this... He's bald, but he just has slightly more of a baby face, which is a really weird kind of <laughs> thing. Um, anyway, we should probably... Well, I should... Yeah, you can introduce yourself more if you want. So this is my little no, brother, Zach. I don't think there's yeah, anything else to say. Uh, there's nothing to say beyond you look like a 50-year-old from Tennessee. And and very dedicated listeners might remember me from the other <laughs> episode that we did. Uh, the similar song, Showdown, that's what we did. Yes, yeah. But, but that was really long. It was like two hours of us rambling. I know. I don't do that anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I no longer really... I don't think it's... I don't do the, the kind of themed playlist now. It's more focused, if you will. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Stan Rogers. Why don't you introduce Stan Rogers, like? Like, what's, oh. what's the setup here? How would, how would you describe him? Um, well... Beyond, like, beyond superlatives, because that's, that's usually what I use to no, describe him. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to. So, so he's, he's just a Canadian folk singer who uh, kind of treads that line between kind of like little romantical folky songs and also like big manly sea shanty things about sinking ships. Um, and I don't know, he's really great. And he doesn't seem very well known. He died pretty young at the age of like 34 or something. I think it was 34, um, yeah. In a plane crash in, in the early 80s. So it was like 1983 he died, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Um, but actually he made quite a lot of music. Like a lot of original songs. I think he had like four or five albums, a couple of yeah. live albums. Yeah, yeah. And one of them was of... one of them was a posthumous release, wasn't it? I think uh, the. Uh... But yeah, so it's basically Canadian folk musician. And when we say Canadian, we don't merely mean that he is from Canada. Like his music is Canadian, isn't it? Yes, so like, yes. It's... I think that's what's kind of sets him apart from stuff. He's he's like he's dropping in all the names of places in Canada that you've never really heard of. Yeah, yeah. Um, which which for me is most places in Canada. I have to admit. <laughs> yes. Like uh, if he if he was just saying about Ottawa, then you know I'm on firm ground. But but I feel I feel like he never ever mentions Ottawa, Ottawa no. or like Toronto. It's some wee place in Nova Scotia. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. It's not the and big th- places. It's the little places. Yeah, which maybe that played some part in him being uh, underrated or not very yeah, yeah. well known. Uh, but I mean, like, underrated to the point of I, I, I would be very surprised if any of his music really charted. I don't really know, like, the chart history of his stuff. Yeah, like, maybe I don't it's think different so. in Canada that it could have charted like very low down. Like Canada, like I'm not dissing Canada, but it's not one of the countries that people talk about in terms of like big hits. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, who is Canada got? Um, what in terms of big Celine music? Dion, um, Brian Adams, Brian Adams, Rush, is Neil. Is Neil Young Canadian? Neil Young's Canadian, yeah. 
Um, oh, so is Joni Mitchell. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, oh. like, pa- half of the members of the band. Oh, okay. Uh, and obviously Gordon Lightfoot, who is probably the closest thing to, to Stan Rogers. Yeah. Well, I don't think he's actually that similar, but everyone talks about Stan Rogers as though he's similar to Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah, I think maybe they've, like, they've got a baritone thing going on. They yeah. both write their own songs. Uh, and, and, and they... They sing about ships. I was going to say, yeah, Golden Lightfoot's most famous song is about a ship. But I feel like he doesn't really sing about ships, actually, in any other song, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, think I mean, Stan Rogers, song. I think it's fair to say like 50% of Stan Rogers' songs are either about ships sailing, ships sinking, or the occasional song about a ship being unsunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, one of his best songs, uh, Mary Ellen Carr. But we'll get onto that now. But clearly underrated and underappreciated. Not by us, obviously. I guess we, just, we don't need to explain any more of the context, but it's, it's very, like, trad folk, isn't it, I guess? Yes. Like, he wrote his own stuff, but it is, it's very rooted in, like, Anglo-Irish folk. It's not like, it's, he's not Bob Dylan, for example, who's folksy, but actually is, like, within popular music, I guess? Yeah, I see what you mean. But yeah, I think Stan Rogers yeah, has a very English-Irish, Scottish kind of feel to his folk songs, I think. Yeah, There's yeah, not yeah. like occasional ones. He kind of steps into some kind of bluesy vibe, but it never quite seems. This is this is the like odd country song. Fit. Yeah, this is um, the odd country song I can remember. Or like, but yeah, he doesn't do like bluegrass or like fiddle tunes or anything. Yeah, it's it's they're all like Irish tunes <laughs> essentially. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, like, and it's but they they're all like yeah, singer songwriting songs, but they don't feel quite poppy. Yeah, yeah. I th- it's, it's kind of hard to draw that line between them, isn't it? But anyway, I was going to say, like, so this, I, I think I might do another episode on Stan Rogers. But I'll cover all my bases. But for now, I think we should focus on, like, something that is often forgotten about when talking about him. Because it's, al- it's always, the focus is always Stan Rogers, his voice, and his lyrics. But mm-hmm. I guess it's the wider point of, like, the music- musicianship of him and the band as well. Yes, no, I- yeah, I think that's that's definitely a big thing. So obviously, for anyone who might be listening who haven't who hasn't listened to Stan Rogers, like as we said before, it's very Canadian, very like sea and maritime oriented, um, and like his lyrics are really good and his voice is great. It's like a deep, rich baritone and they're great melodies. Um, but I think that's pretty much the fo- any whenever people do talk about him, I think that's pretty much almost the sole focus of it all, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like probably people don't focus even on the melodies that much probably more just that's true like the, the themes of the lyrics more than yeah anything. yeah and i think because of that he ends up being a it's like typecast i guess which maybe not unfairly i yes. mean like you know he has a very strong uh let's call it a, aesthetic sensibility it's very particular <laughs> yeah so my my thinking with folk music generally and i think i say that i've probably said this before you probably get bored of me saying it but the best folk is like a balance between like being competent and like on top of it and playing well and singing well without being too shiny and too glossy and too practiced. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to like retain that authenticity and that rustic sound. Yeah, I guess also that like... Without being like a mess. Yeah, was it that kind of live sound as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it sounds like they're literally all in a room together playing with each other as opposed to... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really have the words to... That explain exactly how I feel about that kind of like really shiny modern folk aesthetic you sometimes get where it just feels like people are in different booths or something and yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. they're not but that's what it yeah, sounds yeah. like to me so so you know we all know like if you go on Spotify or you, you have any like folk music compilation there's tons of folk music which is like you know from like the 60s and even as late as the 70s which is very like rustic feeling and sometimes it's a like even the Dubliners for me are sometimes a little bit too much on that side. They're like a little bit too. Um, what would you just? Des- how would you describe it? Well, there's, there's, there's it, it's kind of like slightly janky. Janky. You know, yeah. what? I used the I used the word janky the other day. People were like, "What the hell? What is that word? What does that mean?" I was like, "That's a word." I looked it up. It's you know, it's 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 online. People use it, so I'm glad you just used it because people are yeah. like, "What is janky?" But I feel like the word janky sounds exactly like what it is. Yeah, it's a bit janky. It's a bit rough and ready. I mean, but like, yeah. so yeah, for me, like someone like, I do like the Dubliners, but I do think they could be a bit janky, can't they? Like a little bit, a little bit too convincingly drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe. 
but yeah, there's, there's certainly lots of that in like, well, there's lots of uh, folky fiddle music that feels very much that way, where like the intonation's slightly off and yeah, there's yeah. like the timing's slightly weird. And I guess sometimes it's kind of cool or just add in like an extra beat somewhere because it just kind of feels right to them or whatever. But it just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it feels like it's like on the verge of falling apart. Yes, yeah. I feel like the other extreme end is uh, Bellowhead, who are mm-hmm. super clean. Like, super clean to the point, like, they feel a bit inauthentic sometimes. Like, I really like them, and we've we've gone to see them live, Karen and I. But, like, do you know what I mean? You listen to their albums, and I do feel like sometimes they're like, oh, my God, this is, like, super clean. Like, super high production values. and Yeah, yeah. And I feel like, well, I've seen videos of them playing live, and, like, it's clearly, it is probably in the recording even them playing live. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it kind of feels like it isn't. But, uh, yeah, there's something about folk music generally where you need that level of that feeling of authenticity where like you want it to feel like it's a guy in a pub and not yeah, like yeah. a session musician. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is, this is what, this is how Stan Rogers completely nails it from that point of view, from the point of the, and it is a musicianship point of view, isn't it? And it's kind of a production value thing as well. But yeah, like when I listen to folk music, I want to believe that the person singing it, singing it is it has experienced those things that they're singing about. So I want to believe when Stan Rogers sings about, um, you know, him being a fisherman with a ship called the Mary Allen Carter that sinks to the bottom and then they, you know, raise it back up from the, the seabed. Sorry, spoilers for anyone who hasn't heard the song. I want to believe that he, he lives that life. And obviously he didn't. So, you know, I'm not being like naive, but you want to you want to hear it in the voice and in the music, don't you? You want to just you want to believe it. You want to suspend your disbelief for a second. Yeah, um, I'll be honest. For a while, I thought I thought Stan Rogers had been a, a fisherman. And yeah, yeah. But that's how convincing he is. Yeah, yeah. And I was kind of disappointed reading the Wikipedia article. Being like, <laughs> I went to university, he studied English. Um, yeah. He did. So he studied English and then he started off as like a rock like a, a bass player in a rock band from what I understand. Yeah, I think so. And then he started to move towards towards folk music. But like, is it, it, so that is like a point of musicianship, isn't it? Really? Like, and I think he does like, cause his voice, he sings in tune and he sings melodies and it's not just him, like the wider band. Cause I know you always like to bring up the fact that Garnet Rogers, who is his brother who played in the band is yeah. massively underappreciated. Yes. Even so. to the de- even beyond the degree to which Stan Rogers is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Appreciate. I'm not sure if he deserves his own episode on this podcast, but I know. So I think this is the place for you to say, "Tell us a bit. Tell us a bit about Garnet, about all his fiddle fills in Stan Rogers." Songs. Yeah, yeah. But like, does he play? So Garnet. So firstly, Garnet Rogers, brilliant name. Yeah, that's like a it's a top tier name. That is a proper pirate name. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I fully believe it. In fact, I fully believe that he wasn't christened Garnet. Like that's his nickname because he's just fond of stealing them when they like take over a ship or something like that on the high seas. Like that. That's where that name comes from. Like that's that's what I've got it as in my head. But um, so he played fiddle. But what else did he? Did he played like a bit of guitar as well. Did and he yes, did like the harmony quite often, like the high harmonies. I think. Yeah. So I think he he plays yeah some guitar, some fiddle. To be fair, I think. Some of the the records, it's like it's not always him. I guess he, Garnet was always in the live bands, like when they were touring and stuff. But I think yeah. some of the fiddle bits in the in the studio recordings aren't him. But I think he also played flute on a couple of songs. Oh, did he? Um, that, that's probably it. Flute, fiddle, guitar, um, harmonies. I guess. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but I, I feel like but just the extra be- things that. They do massively contribute to the songs, though, don't they? I, I think so. Maybe, like, I don't think he ever contributed, like, lyrically or anything. Yeah, Probably no, but I just mean, like... overall feel of them all, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah. it's kind of like, I guess it's easy to forget about the people who end up uh, kind of executing parts of songs or, like, adding those little bits. Like, in the same yeah. way that, like, a good analogy would be, like, David Bowie, who, like, great songwriter, great singer. Um, he wasn't really much of an instrumentalist. Um, and people kind of forget that, like, Rick Wakeman and Mick Ronson and Robert Fripp later on and Brian Eno and all these other people, like, contributed, like, to the production and the instrumentation yeah. and the the orchestration and just things like that. And then, like, it's people almost forget that, like, 
and I'm not trying to bring David Bowie down or bring Stan Rogers down, but do you know what I mean? Like, it's the execution on getting that song to that final finished product does rely not just on the person who wrote the song in the first place, but having really fucking good musicians who can actually, like, realise yeah, yeah. it and, like, bring it to the forefront. And it yeah, is kind of a shame, yeah. like... I th- I do th- I still think like that songwriting is the more important element, but the rest of it is it's a shame that it kind of gets forgotten, 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 forgotten. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we don't need to spend tons of time on Garnet Rogers specifically, but damn, like, I think it, what is that song specifically that he plays some really cool fiddle on? I think it's. Uh, uh, I think the 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 genie C. The genie which C, is, which is the... another song about a boat that sings. <laughs> I'll never know what it was we struck But strike we did like thunder John Price give a cry and pitched overside Now it's forever he's gone A fisherman who's out having a good old time fishing with his son and some other guy and then they hit something and then the boat sinks and one of the guys dies um but actually but we don't care about him the, nar- the narrator cares way more about the boat than um, his friend <laughs> yes it's a perfect example of how like it's very crusty folk isn't it do you know what i mean when i say like crusty folk it's like i don't know, I don't know what you mean like, the, you know, the cliche about, like, folksters, like, hanging out in, like, a dingy pub and, like... They're oh, all, like, I see you. Yeah. And they're all, like, someone's brought along, like, a, a banjo and someone's got a fiddle and they're all sitting there singing songs about Scunthorpe and, like, things like that. I, I don't know why it's <laughs> But do you know what I mean? It's, it's something like that. It's, like, it's such a crusty folk song, isn't it? I don't, I don't know if I think that one is crusty. I, I look, I don't mean that as an insult. You know, I No, love, but I, 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 maybe I just don't know what crusty really means. It's. I get. Well, it has not. It doesn't have much of a pop sensibility about it, does it? For one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I and it's like the lyrical that. subject matter is definitely. Again, it's 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 not inaccessible. It's it's a weird question with this kind of folk music, isn't it? Because it's accessible in a really obvious way that like they're straightforward melodies, and it's not it's not like King Crimson or something like that, which is inaccessible in a different way, but. Because of that, like lack of shine and that lack of immediate pop sensibility, it is quite inaccessible. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. Yeah, and I suppose like the subject matter as well is obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty niche. But then and it's it's. I mean, like it's 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 the kind of historical part of folk music. Like that's that's the crusty part of it as well, isn't it? Like, like yeah. it's the kind of crusty folk music that like local historians are into. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. I, I, I can't. I don't. I've never. I've never actually met like a, a local historian necessarily. I'm not even sure if I've met met one, but I've never never met one who said that they like that kind of music specifically. But in my head, like that's that's like that's the stereotype of the person who likes it, fairly or unfairly. But that that's 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 where I sit on that. Um. But you know what I mean. Like that's what I mean by crusty folk. And it's not a pejorative. It's not a pejorative. No, no, I, okay. No, I get you. I, I can get behind that. But yeah, so the Genie C, it does have really cool fiddle. Now, I'm not, a f- I, I don't play like fiddle or violin, so I'm not even making claims about it from like a technical virtuoso point of view. But in terms of its impact, it yeah. is cool. It's just, yeah, you just, you can, you can hear like the passion bleed from it, can't you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, like it, it definitely like heightens everything. Where... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I feel like it gives it way more of a sense of kind of gravitas, which is like, not just a guy who lost his boat, like he's lost his entire livelihood. And yeah, it's yeah. just like some lament for it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and don't forget, as the refrain in the song goes, You'll go to sea no more. I'll go. Oh, 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 that's the refrain. But he says it a few times. Uh, the boat named for my mother. So you know, the boat was the the genie C. The name comes from his well, not Stan's actual mother's name, but the character's <laughs> name. Um, but it's a great song because it's not just about the loss of a boat and his livelihood, but it's about the loss of the memory of his mother. That's why yeah. he values it higher than his friend's life sack. You know. Yeah, I know. But it's about the loss of anything as well. It's, it is. It's about that's the Specific, genie song. But it's universal. Well, you know what? That is a good point because that's quite often how I like all great songwriting. I think is like a balance between those two things, isn't it? If it's too specific, then 
it's very hard for like a wide audience to get particularly into it. And it, it's hard to kind of identify with it if it's just one person saying about like a very specific experience or something. And if it's too universal, I think it can come across as a bit cheap or it can just end up just not landing because it can apply to anything. Yeah. Whereas like most great songwriters can make something universal specific. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. I definitely think this is a, this is a real thing. Yeah, this is a real thing. Uh, and I think Stan Rogers is very good at it, but but it does come back to the point that he still does it. Like the specificities that he happens to be using are still inaccessible. I think to a lot of people, you you yes. need to be really into your sea shanties. But I still yeah. think he's a very he's very good at doing it. He's just not doing it in a way that most people can immediately identify with. I guess. Yes. You need to, and you I guess can... we should we shouldn't pretend that either of us are seafaring mariners. Um, I mean, you almost look the part, but you look <laughs> you're more like, more like a Mississippi kind of um, steamboat kind of dude. But yeah, it, it's not like you and I have any like relation to this to this lifestyle. That... Yeah, no, no, but, no, but from from like an aesthetic point of view, we, we have like that inclination of liking it. Clearly, yes, I, that's yeah, all I, think I mean. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, do you know what I mean? There's <clears throat> there's songs about you know like you know we we both like Dio and his songs are all like fantastical, but um. I don't think for a second that either of us could pretend much experience living in a fantasy world with wizards. So you know what I mean? Well, you're like, obviously, but I guess just on your point of like, oh, it's quite difficult for people to relate to these songs or whatever. But, yeah, that's true. But I, I guess the relating thing is, it, it doesn't mean you, you don't need to have experienced it. I think it's just like what you like, isn't it? You can relate to things that for some reason you don't have yeah, experience of, but for some reason that's true, yeah, that's true. You, you feel yourself inclined towards. It's, it's a weird thing, isn't it? But back to the yeah. musicianship. Um, I was going to say Genie sees good, actually, because it kind of sums up the... Because it is, like, really competently played, but it still has that kind of authentic, rustic feel to it. But also, part of that is... Um, I think it's one of the end verses. You can kind of hear him move away from the mic and you can hear like the creaking of a chair or something. And there's like a little bit oh, of really? breathing in the... Yeah, I heard it once. And like, once you hear it once, you just can't get it out of your head. And sure, I could have another me. And it's one of those things that totally doesn't ruin it. It just makes it sound like real. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, it's such like a tiny thing, but the the fidelity of the recording is so high that you can just hear that, and I I really like it actually. You can kind of yeah, I don't that's know, quite cool. yeah, yeah. And it's the same like he didn't record it in a pub, but like when you can hear things that are recorded in like a pub, yeah. and you can hear like the clinking of a glass. That that's it's kind of similar to that, isn't it? And it does yeah, just yeah. have that feeling of authenticity of it. Um, yeah, and I guess the fact they didn't do anything to take it out. Yeah, 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 which probably would have been quite hard. I imagine they just did play it all live, and it was like probably his mic did, that picked yeah. it up, and they were like, you know what, you know what, it's such a good take. We're just gonna keep it. Oh, maybe they didn't even notice. No idea. They might not have noticed that because they haven't yeah. obsessively listened to it <laughs> quite as much as we have. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's there's tons of old recordings where that's the case. You can hear like a little thing in the background, like the Beatles in Cream recordings as well. There's a few. Yeah. I think on, on Superstition, you can hear Stevie Wonder song, you can hear there's like a squeaky bass pedal. Oh, I think I've heard people say that, but I've never like caught it like myself. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I read that somewhere once and I did actually listen to the intro like 10 times in a row with good <laughs> headphones. I was like, oh yes, I can, can, can hear it now. <laughs> Although he is like trad and folk based, you know, they do do some like country-ish songs. And I think there's a few songs that are a bit more like rock songs as well. Yeah, well, I, I think there's a lot of folky, rocky songs. Yeah, yeah it's still yes, like folk rock. Yeah, but there, there are. Yeah, there's a good couple of like straightforwardly rocky songs. So one, one of my favorite kind of more straightforward ones, straightforward like rock songs, is uh, Man With Blue Dolphin. Yes. Do you remember that one? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, let me. Can you can, can you sing it to me? And I'll. Uh, I'll no, I'm not going to sing it to you. <laughs> <laughs> he had to pick a boat gone from Dowdy to derelict in half a dozen years. It's about a boat. It's about fixing a boat that nearly sinks. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but again, it's not just about that. It's about never giving up. It's about persevering through the hard times. So I think that. So, wait. So you're going to say something, weren't you? Uh, well, uh, yeah. That one's kind of just straightforwardly. Rocky. There's a couple of songs like that. I yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. I feel like most of those ones I don't like quite as much as his more folky moments. Yeah, but yeah, like, for sure. He does them 
That's one of my favorite ones. That is a really good one. That is a great chorus. Um, he pounds his fist white in the dock in the night. He pounds his fist white on the dock in the night and cries, I'm going to win. Yeah, I feel like he maybe kind of experimented them with that kind of feeling a bit more in that last album or later on, yeah. But that's the yeah. thing, like his lyrics are very straightforward. They're not necessarily metaphorical, are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's a sophistication to them, which goes beyond just like a straightforward lyric. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And yeah, it is yeah. like, you want to explain the lyrics more, but then you realize actually they explain themselves perfectly well. Yes. I think the, the only times really where you need a bit of explanation is more like you need a little glossary, whereas like some nautical terms are just like some place in Canada where it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. actually the significance of this place in Canada is that it isn't by the sea. And <laughs> yes, that's why yeah, he yeah. named it in this song. You're like, oh, okay, I've got my map out. I understand that bit. But yeah, his, <laughs> his lyrics are usually pretty, pretty straightforward. You know, all of them, like Northwest Passage is his most famous one, probably, I, I'd say. Yeah. For just one time, I would take the Northwest Passage. That's my uh, alarm clock in the morning, that song, just so you know. Oh, jeez, is it? To be fair, you should never do that to a song you love. I, I'm probably going to have to change it soon. Yeah, um, definitely. But the song, like, it's, it's a brilliant example of, like, sophisticated simplicity in terms of the lyrics. There's nothing, I, I can't remember all the lyrics off the top of my head, but nothing in there is, like, obviously metaphorical. Like, it's all, like, straightforward descriptions and narrative of something. Yeah. But in a way, the whole song is a metaphor for, again, like, just exploring new things and that kind of, like, it is that weird balance between, like, folksy root rootsiness and lyrical sophistication, which... Not many people actually do the... I'm doing lots of hand gestures right now, which obviously no one listening <laughs> is ever going to be able to hear, but they're, they're conveying the point very well. <laughs> I look like a little air marshal, dude. Yeah, um, yeah you do. <laughs> but do you want me like, like Bob Dylan, who is obviously like the most famous folk musician of the 20th century, is very different. Like His lyrics are like more obviously like hitting you over the head with lyrical sophistication. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They're more obviously like, oh yeah, this guy's a really good lyricist. Um, but Stan... It's just, it's like the sophistication behind the obvious simplicity. Which yeah, yeah. Just, I think it just sneaks it in there. Yeah, it sneaks it in there. Yeah, it's like a little Trojan horse of brilliance. <laughs> um, but the story, the chorus for Man with Blue Dolphin, going back to that song. Um, Even afloat, she's a hole in the water where his money goes. Every dollar goes and it's driving him crazy. He pounds his fists white on the dock in the night and cries, I'm going to win and licks the blood away. And he's going to raise the dolphin. Again, like, it's really just straightforward, but I can't convey it like his voice does. But that is badass. I mean, it is incredibly <laughs> badass. And I just think sometimes like, you need to have a more, um, a deeper emotional response to a song than just, that's badass. Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, and I think it's a feeling you get a lot from Stan Rogers. It's just, this is badass. This is pretty badass. Yeah, it just, this just feels really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I think... Which we, um, the Witch of the West Midland is a very good example of that. So that was a song originally written by Archie Fisher. Was it? Was it originally written by Archie Fisher? Or yes, it... I think so. But that's the song that it feels very much like a traditional song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Archie Fisher is like ninety percent of the stuff he does is traditional Scottish folk songs, isn't it? Yeah. But that song feel. I mean, it fe like that's another good sign of a good folk song. You know, a good folk band gets the balance between polished and unpolished. A good folk song. It could have been written yesterday. But it sounds like it was written 300 years ago. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, Fields of Athen Rye is a great example of that because that was written in the 70s. Yes, but it feels like it's a genuine, bona fide famine song. Yeah, it does. And, like, Donegal Danny, again, was written in, like, the 70s. And that sounds like it could be, could be like, 150 years old or 200 years old. What song were we just talking about, the Stan Rogers song? We were, talking we were talking about Witch of the West Westmoreland. The there we go, Witch of the Westmoreland. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, I think the point there is that that's a song that just feels really badass. Yeah, that, yeah. That's one of 
doesn't really feel like lyrically there's very much going on. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's pretty cool because it's about places in the Lake District and kind of drops a few names in there, which is fun. But it's just like a guy wounded who goes to see a witch and then yeah, yeah. is healed. It's like there's no peril. There's no there's nothing really for him to overcome. It just is cool and but like. That's one where just musicianship absolutely shines. The fiddle's yeah. going absolutely wild. The bass is going, just playing the melody all badass. And it's just like that's and it, I even like but musically as well. It's still super, super simple, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's just the same melody over and over, really. And it's just it's just dynamics, isn't it? It's just like how much it just shows how much you can get from real simplicity and just like nailing the dynamics. Like the most complex thing about yeah. the song, the most complex thing about the song is that there's a bar of five. Five four yeah. every time it repeats. That's a, that's it. But beyond that, the chords are just they're literally the four chords, the famous four chords. Yeah, yeah, they are actually. Yeah, uh, but it's a brilliant song. I love it. It's great. But yeah, I think that's like probably the height of Stan Rogers' badass. We're like, yes, that song yeah, just yeah. rocks more than any of the songs where he's trying to do a rock song. This one just fucking rocks. It's back to what I said before. Like sometimes a song just rocks and it's just badass. <clears throat> and I think like yeah. a totally different band. Queen, there is no more emotional depth, I feel, to Queen songs, any Queen song, beyond. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, this feels awesome. Like, that is what Queen, yeah. Yeah. like, that's what they encapsulate. Like, they're not, like, oh, a good point, like, I never feel like heart, like, oh, it's heartfelt, it's authentic on an emotional level. Oh, do you know what I mean? It's they're not even like cute or anything. They're just cool. They're just awesome. Like catchy. <laughs> but like on an emotional level, it's just like this is just awesome. Like I don't even know what else to say. It's just awesome. Um Yeah, yeah. And I feel like Stan does that in a similar way. Like he's he's obviously not exactly the same, but this like some of his songs you just hear it like this is just cool. And like I, d- I don't know if I have a sophisticated enough vocabulary to to really put it in any other terms. What is that? What is that emotion? Do you know what I mean? It's just weird. It's it's such an odd it's thing. It's just like right? cool ballsiness. Just yeah, yeah. Of, uh, yeah, I don't know. And it's it's it is a it is a sign of brilliance, isn't it? When you just like I can't think of anything else to say other than yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Just listen to the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just listen to the but, song. No, I I was I was going to say something there about yeah. So I think the great thing about Stan as well is because he has lots of these badass songs, but then also the kind of heartfelt, sincere songs. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. And it's fun if you listen to his live recordings when you hear just like his big chesty baritone. Um, and then at the end of the song, you'll hear him like say something to someone in the band or whatever, or the guy recording it. And his yeah. normal speaking voice, he just sounds like the friendliest Canadian dude ever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, I've noticed that. Terrible. Yeah, no, there is one of them. I, I hear it every time. And I... I like, I can't remember what he says. He, I think he asks about the recording or something, doesn't he? Like, yeah, like it's being is recorded. the big rolling, Steve? Is the yeah, big is rolling, it? That's Steve? It. <laughs> okay. Is the tape rolling, Steve? <laughs> is the tape rolling, Steve? <laughs> and he just, he's, it's just lovely. But, um, yeah, like some, some badass acapella song, and at the end, it sounds like Come with the Frog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was going to say, like, all this talk of, like, how badass it is, it would be very easy for us to slip into, like, um, oh, it's manly, and it's just all about, like, put hair on your chest. Oh, but I see. Okay. It's not, like, an affected, like, I mean, it's stereotypically manly in the most kind of straightforward, stereotypical way. Yeah. You know, in the way that, like, in, in kind of popular culture, we all know that, like, something that's advertised to men will suddenly be like, it's badass. Yeah, yeah. This is action shower gel for sporting yeah, yeah, yeah. men. Yeah, this shower gel has whiskey in it. Yeah, it's oak smoked for men. But you know what I mean? Like you can get that vibe from a Stan Rogers and B people who are fans of Stan Rogers. But that's not really what I'm getting at. Like because it, it does feel authentic, and also like I feel like he is quite a sensitive songwriter. Actually, there are songs about feeling. Um, well, there are songs about feelings, firstly, that it's not just <laughs> I'm, I'm a badass. Do you know what I mean? It's not I'm a badass and we're badass people. It's like. Even like Mary Ellen Carter, there are lines where he expresses like not being able to do something. And it's like, actually, it's not the most stupid stereotype of butch, stupid yeah, manliness. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I think you know what I mean. I think if, any, if anyone gives yeah, this stuff a listen. That, in, in those, bad, those badass ones are kind of more about like struggling against adversity or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like both, but not so much physically sometimes, but mainly like the emotional feeling of 
having to fight against something. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's where his yeah sensitive manliness comes in. <laughs> I know. I generally do think like there are lots of bands who do like sea shanties and stuff, and it does become almost that like toxic masculinity of these blokes trying to just be manly for the sake of it, and it's a bit cringy. Yeah. You see these bands on like YouTube if you look up like sea shanties, and it's these, these people. It's a bit affected, I think, is what I'm trying to say. Yes, it, yeah. And I just, I never, I never got that impression from Stan Rogers. He just seems like an authentic bloke who just, you know, is a is a, is a tape rolling Steve. Do you know what I mean? Just like a normal, like <laughs> yeah. nice guy who actually he's not trying to like portray himself as the manly man. Um, it just that's just how his art has expressed himself in a way, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And there's yeah. there's certainly never like a uh, a misogynistic feel either to any of these things. Yeah, yeah, um, no, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I guess he he objectifies he objectifies boats way more than women. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> um, there is that there is that one folk song he covers, which is like very very much. Well, it is a trad folk song, and it is very like it's very uh, a good example of like attitudes to women in a lot of folk songs. Um, which one is it? Um, oh no, not I. Oh yeah, that one's that one's a bit of a weird one. That is I, just. I'm never bit... really sure what the message that song is. I, yeah, all I get from it is that like folk tunes can be pretty fucking misogynistic. Uh, but I mean, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not like obviously so necessarily. Like it took me a while to get it because I wasn't really listening to the lyrics. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure I understand that. So that's like a guy goes up and says, "Hey, marry me to this woman." She says, "Now nah, I'm not going to marry you." And then she gets pregnant. Is that like by him? Is that the idea? And then at the end, it's like, huh, he's not going to help you with the baby because you wouldn't marry him. That'll yeah, that's, is that the that idea? Is it, that is it. That is okay. the song. Um, and it's just like, I think it's pretty normal. It's probably not the. It's not as bad as some old folk songs get, but it's not great either. It's just like, it's very vindictive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good But it's a good fun song. That's the thing. It is a fucking good song, actually. Um, <laughs> and um, what was the other song you mentioned? Made on the Shore. It's a bit more like, it's more, yeah. it's, it's less, I don't think it's sexist. It's a bit more old timey in its attitudes towards like relationships. I think that's probably the better way to put that song. Yes. But I guess Made on the Shore kind of goes the other way and that uh, she actually lulls all the men to sleep and then steals all their gold. Oh my god, Zach, spoiler, spoiler alert, you need to give spoilers Sorry, to the songs, like, because people, people, obviously people are going to listen to this and go out there immediately, rush out there to listen to Stan Rogers, and they'll be listening to these songs like, oh, what happens next? Oh wait, it's all been spoiled for me, because... Well, yeah. I'm sure I heard a thing a while ago about some kind of study where people enjoy movies more when, the, when they've been spoiled. Did I make that up? Um, so maybe it's the same with songs, let's spoil all the songs. Oh, uh, It is interesting that, like, well, it's not interesting, but it's appropriate that like there could be spoilers for most Stan Rogers songs because they're so narrative based. In fact, I would say. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Are they all narrative based? I can't really. I mean, like, I guess like Northwest Passage isn't a narrative, but in a sense, it's a story about. It's. Do you know what I mean? It's. It is in a yeah, sense. Yeah. It's, um. And again, that um, is a very. Yeah, I'm having. Yeah, I'm having difficulty thinking of any that aren't narrative. Yeah, and it's a very folksy thing again. And I think some people are probably not super keen on that because you do need to pay attention to the story. Yes, and I think that also kind of results sometimes in the same thing over and over again, like melodically. Yeah, that is whatever. True. So, so if you, you know, if you're not listening to the story or if you're kind of bored by the story, then it's just like okay, I've heard this melody ten times now. I don't really care. Yeah, no, that's true. It's a good point. And I guess that is kind of a, a note of warning. I think anyone who's ever going to be listening to this podcast about Stan Rogers is probably into folk anyway, so that's fine. But I think if you're not if you're not into folk, you're probably not going to be listening to this. And, you know, I would never recommend Stan Rogers to someone like that. But it is kind of, it's not conventional music in a sense. In a way, it's very conventional and very straightforward. But again, it comes back to that aesthetic sensibility, isn't it? Um yeah. If you're not in, if you're not into it, you're not gonna be into it. You're not really gonna see the light. Yeah, yeah, definitely <laughs> see the light. Oh God, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm conscious. I did. I did phrase it in a way that made it clear that I do think it's objectively brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, brilliant. I I understand if you don't like it. That's fine. Like, we're all allowed to be wrong. That's basically what I'm saying here. God gave us the free will to reject His word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
yes, Stan gave us the free word to reject <laughs> his word. Um, I think that's a great note to end on, to be honest. it's like, we're, we're like preaching here, aren't we? We're like proselytizing and yes, putting the good so. word yes. out. The gospel of Stan. Yes. Yeah, I think I think Saint Stan. Saint Stan. Saint makes Stan. Sense. Yeah, it makes sense. The martyrdom of Saint Stan is, the is his life story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, I think that's a good note to end on. Thanks for your time, Zach. No worries. Do you want to plug anything? No, there's I have absolutely nothing to plug. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think there would be. Oh well, have a have a good rest of your weekend, Zach. I will do. You too. And please get rid of the handlebar moustache. No, it's just staying. <laughs> <laughs>